Hi guys, it's Roy from Bella Lost 3D here again with part two of our Jam Jar series. And in this part, I will be taking the jam jars that we created in the previous video and painting them in a substance painter. Before we start, I did test out my models before recording this video to see how well they would go through. And I did notice I made a couple of mistakes. So just to rectify those mistakes, basically here's our low poly. And what I did was I went into our low poly and in edge mode, I selected these three edge loops here and pressed X and I and dissolved them off because I realized we don't actually need them. And then what I also did was in face mode, I alt selected this ring and just brought it down slightly and then selected this edge and just scaled it in just a touch. We don't actually need all of that extra geometry there. And then I quite simply pressed A to select everything, pressed S and shift Z to exclude the Z axis. And I just brought it out just a touch, just a little bit. And if I bring back my high poly, uh, let's see. And I brought it out so that it's just, excluding the Z, so that it's just overlapping, just like so. And that just makes sure that it covers the whole of the geometry of the jar. And then what I did was I did another quick unwrap. I won't go through that again, as that hasn't changed. All I've done is just a little bit more of an unwrap and exported it as per the previous video. So let's go into Substance Painter and start painting. Okay, so here we are over in Substance Painter. Let's start a new project. Go to File and select New. Now under Template, we need to click on the drop down and we need to choose PBR Metallic Roughness Alpha Blend. And that will give us our metallic roughness workflow, which is what Blender uses, with Alpha in the channels, which is going to be useful for transparency later on. So let's click that. And then under File, select and choose our low poly object. In document resolution, I'm going to put that up to 2K. I'm not going to need 2K for such a small object, but it's always better to work from a higher resolution to a lower resolution. You can downscale a resolution without losing a huge amount of, of um, detail. But once you've downscaled to a resolution, scaling it back up is not going to regain that detail. So always work from a higher resolution than you actually need. And then you can just scale it down later normal map i'm going to make it open gl and click ok and just wait for our jar to be loaded up and as you can see in our scene there we have the 3d viewport here we have our low poly model and in the 2d viewport we have our texture so let's just give ourselves a bit of space here let's move that in there i'm going to delete this layer off and now what we need to do is we need to bake all the textures including the normal map from the high poly onto this model so let's go to our texture settings I'm going to go through these. I'm going to press plus and choose ambient occlusion to add an ambient occlusion to the channel list. And I'm going to click on bake mesh maps. And under bake mesh maps, I'm going to leave all of these here. I'm going to change the output size to match my document resolution at 2K. And under high definition meshes, I'm going to click this little icon here. And I'm going to choose my high poly model. And let's take a look at the settings. I'm just going to increase because I know this, this is going to happen. In fact, I'm going to leave it as it is just to show you what happens. I think all the settings I'm going to leave the same at the moment. I'm going to bake the, bake the jar meshes and we'll go through. And it goes through all the all the different channels, bakes the meshes for the, uh, the textures for those channels. And as you can see, it's not that great a bake. You can see around the edges here a few artifacts and a little a bit, bit of dodgy geometry there that's not a great bake so let's go back into bake meshes and what i'm going to do is the max frontal distance i'm just going to increase a tiny bit to 0 0.015 and i'm going to do the same to the max rear distance and i'm going to go down to aliasing and change it to subsampling 4x4 and i know i know this um these are the right settings because i've done it with this model before or a similar model before um, but sometimes you just have to experiment with them them distances and click bake jar mesh maps and as you can see it's going through all the channels again rebaking everything and when i click ok we look and as you can see most of them artifacts are gone and it's quite a clean looking bake 
In fact, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. It's quite a good bake, that. Right, so now we have our jar. Let's paint it. Let's go into layers, and we can start choosing our materials. Now, I've done this model before um, exactly the same, and I'm going to do it exactly the same again. So I'm going to go to Smart Materials and wait for that to load up. And in the search field, type in glass. So I'm going to add a glass film, which is this one. I'm going to drag that into my layers. Now I like to work with folders and what I can do is create a folder and then mask an area and then all the different textures associated with that mask can go in that folder. So I'm just going to hit the folder button here and I'm going to drag my glass inside it. I'm going to rename that to glass. And now the reason that we created the color ID mask, let's right click and add mask with color selection I'm just gonna drag that up a bit because it's a bit low down there and pick pick color and then with the color picker we're just gonna click this blue and as you can see it masks off just the area that you want the glass in now obviously that glass is fully transparent you can now see straight through it it looks like an empty glass it looks good but it's an empty glass we need to add some color and I think for the raspberry jam that we were gonna make we go to our smart materials and i think it was called i think it was the leather it was one of the leathers because i had a nice little sort of texture to it there we go because really what we're putting under the glass isn't going to be highly material based it's just more a, a color sort of you know that you can see through the glass we don't really need to be spot on with the materials so we can pretty much use anything and it's all about using things and making little adjustments to change them and turning them into something completely different and in this case it's leather fine and i'm just going to drop that in the the folder there and it doesn't do anything at the moment because the glass is overriding the leather with the normal so let's go normal and we change that to overlay and as you can see almost instantly that changes the color and I think that looks like a nice red colour. I might actually try multiplying that, make that a bit darker. No, overlay overlay should be right. Overlay, overlay. There we go. Okay, so we've got our glass jar with some red substance in it. All right, so that gives us our glass, and it looks like a jammy sort of colour. Let's take a look at the jar lid. So let's create a folder and we don't want that folder inside that one. So when I just drag it out, I'm gonna create a mask with color and I'm gonna select the green. I mean, we could actually leave it almost exactly as it is, which is why it looks quite good for a lid of a jar, but a jam jar is gonna be same sort of color as the content. So let's take a look at, still painted. We'll put that in there. And that looks pretty good so far, but we want to get rid of this edge wear off of it. So let's select on that. There we go. Drill down to the mask underneath. And we'll just change the global balance so that there's no... Yeah, that should be about right. And let's also, while we're here, get rid of some of these metal details. Yep, that should be fine. And the paint, let's change the paint colour. Mm, bring it down sort of a more that sort of darker color and there we have our jar lid let's look at the label now i've actually downloaded a texture for this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to close these folders up create another folder and drag it out of these folders up to the top just close these down we'll call that label we we'll create a mask color selection pick color red and i've actually got a material i've downloaded for that let's see if i can find it uh paper glossy i'm just going to drag that from my other desktop onto there and choose base material current session import and now we can just find that in here paper glossy and drag it into the label folder and that gives that a papery color but it's obviously the grains a little bit too big so let's uh bring it up a bit now this material i've got from i think it was from um, substance source 
And there we go. I missed some of the vertexes. Right away, I see it. I've missed some vertices. And you can see it in the thing here. Right there. You can see it. If I hover over it, you can see in the mask right there. Um, so what I want to do is select on that mask. Make sure my paintbrush is selected. I'm going to go to brushes. Find my basic hard. And let's see if I can... Let's switch this to orthographic view. There we go. And then what I can do is I can click here and then shift and click to here. Oh, no, that didn't work. Didn't work at all. Strange. Ah, there we go. <laughs> So, shift, there we go, just bring the size of the brush up, and we just paint out this mask a little bit so that we could, we don't have to worry about it, and I must, have, I must have missed one of the vertexes when I was painting the vertexes earlier, so it's easy to do, um, Blender's a bit odd with vertex painting, sometimes, sometimes it, it looks like you've painted everything and you actually haven't, so uh, there we go. And back to the material, let's go down. Now under preset, we've got some different presets and I think photo glossy slick was the best one. And that's the one that we want for our label. So we now have our label, but we need to put something on there. And what I did was I downloaded a couple of textures for this earlier on. I'm gonna just bring them in. I'm gonna select the two labels, a front and a back label. And these are literally just Two textures I got from the internet. One was a homemade label for the front of it. And one was a label from a jar of marmalade or something with all the ingredients and nutrition stuff on it. And a barcode. So let's just drag them into our shelf. And we change to texture. And texture. And current session. Import. And that will show them on there. So now let's take a look-see. What we want to do is... I want to add above this paper glossy a fill layer. So click add fill layer. And for the base color of that fill layer, I want to add the texture. Now, obviously that's way too big. You can see it's way too big. So let's scale it down. Let's... We don't want it to fill the whole of the yeah, I think that would be about right there. Yeah, I think that's about right. So now what we want to do is we need to create, on that film layer, a black mask. And it disappears. Don't worry about it. Because then what we can do is go to our polygon fill and choose our polygons. And let's take a look. Nope. There we go, there it is, right there. And drag that on there, and if we spin that around, you can see our label is on there. And then what we do is we do exactly the same thing with the back label. So I'm just gonna get that in a position where I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna duplicate that layer. Uh, duplicate the layer. I'm gonna remove that mask. I'm going to change that for the base the label. I'm just going to move that so that it fits in where I want it. So let's bring it down. And let's fit it there. And I'm going to make it a bit wider as well. So I think when I created this, I actually kind of shrunk it down a little bit. Right, so now we do exactly the same thing with the black mask. But I'm going to do the reverse just to show you what to do. Add a white mask. And of course we can see all of it. So now if we paint in black. It removes those parts of the mask. So we now remove all of this mask. Like so. And now we have a fully painted marmalade jar. And I've actually just realised that 
I used the wrong texture there. <laughs> I, I actually used the marmalade. I wanted the raspberry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up again. I'm going to go to that fill layer. Because I'm going to take that. Drag the raspberry one in. And you could save it with these, these layers. And, and as you can see, I'm just changing these around like so. You can actually change it whatever you like. One thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do that as an overlay. No, I'm not. I'm going to do it as a multiply. There we go. So we now have our perfect label all the way around the jar. Let's export. So let's go to File, Export Textures. We're going to choose a folder, and this will be Desktop, Jar, and Select Folder. PBR metallic rough, I'm going to change that, no, I'm going to leave that metallic rough, and everything else I'm going to leave exactly the same, I'm going to untick the shader parameters and click export, and as you can see it will work its way through, and now let's go over to Blender. Okay, so finally we're back into Blender, and we have both our high and low poly jar sitting here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the high poly jar, GX. I'm just going to move it out of the way, out of the way of the camera just for now. I'm going to hide the high poly. I'm going to select the low poly. I'm going to go to the material tabs. I'm going to add a new material and go to shading. Select the BSDF shader and control shift T to bring up the open image menu. And let's find, doo -doo -doo, bum, bum, bum. There we go. Here are our textures that we created. Let's select all of them and press principal shader. And there we have it in our blender just there. Let's go into camera view to look at the camera. I'm going to shift D and GX. Just move that to the side there. Because what I want to do is RZ and I want to give it a spin round. Ooh, give it a spin round like so, so we can see the back label like so and i think that looks quite good let's see how it looks on the rendered oh looks wonderful so let's hit f12 and give it a good render and there it is there's our jam jar our jar of raspberry jam made in blender and painted in substance painter well i hope you've enjoyed today's video and i hope you've learned something from it if you have, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, really helps with the channel. And if you want to know when I release new videos, pound that notification button and it will let you know. Thank you very much for joining me and I hope to see you in my next video.